Now, student, the sixth chapter, that is the last chapter of the syllabus, is probability distribution. And this chapter is for 12 marks. Now, so in this chapter, we are going to study three types of distributions. First is binomial distribution. Second one is Poisson's distribution. And third one is normal distribution. So, the first distribution is binomial distribution. Now, so if I perform a random experiment, then it is called as trial. If I perform random experiment for n number of times, then the total number of trials will be n. And out of these n trials, suppose I got r number of successes. So r is the total number of successful trials. Now, for example, if I toss a coin 10 times, so n will be 10. And out of these 10 trials, if I got successes in 5 trials, then r will be 5. So probability of r as per the binomial distribution is given by probability of r is equal to n c r p rest to r into q rest to n minus r where n is equal to number of trials, r is equal to number of successful trials, p is equal to probability of success in a single trial, q is equal to 1 minus p is equal to probability of failure in a single trial. So we know that probability of failure will be the complement of probability of success. So Q is the complement of P. That's why Q is given by 1 minus P. So by using this formula, we can find the probability of R number of successes out of N number of trials. And it is probability of R is equal to NCR into P rest to R into Q rest to N minus R. Now, student, second one is mean of binomial distribution, that is M, is given by N into P, where N is the total number of trials and P is the probability of success in a single trial. Third formula is standard deviation sigma, and it is root N P Q. Now, students, the first sum is an unbiased coin is tossed six times. Find the probability of getting exactly four heads. So in solution given n is equal to six comma r is equal to four. Now so p is now so p means the probability of success in a single trial. So in a single trial the probability of getting head will be one upon two. Now Q is given by 1 minus P that we know. So it is 1 minus 1 upon 2. So is equal to 1 upon 2. So 1 by 2 is the value of Q. Now, as per binomial distribution, P of R is given by NCR into P rest to R into Q rest to N minus R. So P of 4 will be 6C4 into 1 upon 2 bracket rest to 4 into 1 upon 2 bracket rest to 6 minus 4 so is equal to now student 6 c4 this calculation you can do on calci and it will be 15 into 1 upon 2 means 0 0.5 so it is 0 0.5 bracket rest to 4 into 1 upon 2 means 0 0.5 bracket rest to 6 minus 4 is 2 and so if i do this calculations on calci i'll get 0 0.2343 is equal to now student if I press D by C on the Cal C, then I'll get 15 upon 64. So 15 upon 64 is your final answer or this 0 0.2343 is also your final answer. Now, so next problem is an unbiased coin is tossed five times. Find the probability of getting A exactly three heads b at least four heads so in solution given when an unbiased coin is tossed five times it means that n is equal to five now p is equal to when p is the probability of getting success in a single trial so in a single trial getting head so probability of getting head in a single trial will be one upon two because in Sample space, there are two points that is head and tail 
and in this event there will be only one sample point that is head so 1 by 2 is the probability of getting success now shown q is the complement of p so it is given by 1 minus p so is equal to 1 minus p is 1 upon 2 here the LCM of these two terms is 2. We have to multiply this 1 by this 2. So in numerator, I'll get 2 minus 1 is 1 upon LCM is 2. So 1 by 2 is the value of Q. Now, as per binomial distribution, P of R is given by NCR into P rest to R into Q rest to N minus R. Now, student, the first probability that we are going to find is for exactly three heads. Now, student, for exactly three heads, R will be equal to 3. Now, as per this equation, I can write P of 3 is equal to 5C3 into 1 upon 2 bracket rest to 3 into 1 upon 2 bracket rest to 5 minus 3. So, is equal to the value of 5C3 is 10 into 1 upon 2 is 0.5 bracket rest to 3 into 1 upon 2 is 0 0.5 bracket rest to I'll get 2. Now so if I do this calculations on calc C I'll get 0 0.3125 and if I press D by C on the calc C I'll get 5 upon 16. So these are the probabilities of getting exactly 3 heads. Now so second probability that we are going to find is for at least 4 heads. Now so at least 4 heads means 4 or 5. It means the value of R will be 4 or 5. Now, as per this equation, I can write probability of 4 or 5 is equal to, in this term, I am putting R is equal to 4 plus R means plus. In this term, I am writing R is equal to 5. So, this is the term for R is equal to 4 and this is the term for R is equal to 5. So, is equal to, now, so 5C4 is 5 into 1 upon 2 is 0 0.5 bracket rest to 4 into here 1 upon 2 is 0 0.5 bracket rest to I'll get 1 plus this plus sign 5c5 is 1 into 1 upon 2 is 0 0.5 bracket rest to 5 into here I'll get 0 0.5 bracket rest to 0 so is equal to if I do this calculations on calc I'll get 0 0.15625 plus this plus sign if I do this calculations on calc I'll get 0 0.03125 so is equal to I'll get 0 0.1875 and if I press D by C I'll get 3 upon 16 so this is the answer of getting at least 4 heads now so next sum is on an average 10% of the product manufactured by a certain machine are defective. If from these products 4 are chosen at random, find the probability that one of them is defective. So in solution, now should given 10% of the products manufactured are defective. It means that P is equal to 10% and 10% means 10 upon 100. So 10 upon 100 is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is the value of P. Now we know that Q is equal to 1 minus P. So is equal to 1 minus 0.1. So is equal to 0.9. So this is the value of Q. Now shown here, we have to choose 4 products. And out of these 4 products, we have to find the probability that one of them is defective. It means that N is equal to 4 and R is equal to 1. Now, as per binomial distribution, P of R is given by NCR into P rest to R into Q rest to N minus R. So, if I put the values, I'll get P of 1 is equal to 4C1 into 0.1 bracket rest to 1 into 0.9 bracket rest to 4 minus 1. So, is equal to 4C1 is 4 into this term here as it is into 0.9 bracket rest to I'll get 3. Now, so if I do this calculation on calc, I'll get P of 1 is equal to 0 0.2916. So, this is your final answer. Now, students, next sum is if the chance that out of 10 telephone lines, one of the line is busy at any instant is 0.2. What is the chance that 5 of the lines are busy? Now, students, solution given 
n is equal to 10, p is equal to 0.2. So q is equal to 1 minus p that is 1 minus 0.2 is equal to 0.8. Now student here r is equal to 5. We have to find the chance that 5 lines are bz. So r is equal to 5. As per binomial distribution p of r is given by ncr into p rest to r into q rest to n minus r. If I put the values, I'll get p of 5 is equal to 10 c 5 into 0.2 bracket rest to 5 into 0.8 bracket rest to 10 minus 5. So is equal to 10 c 5 is 252 into 0.2 bracket rest to 5 into 0.8 bracket rest to I'll get 5. And if I do this calculation on Cal C, I'll get 0 0.02642. So this is your final answer. Now students, next sum is assuming 2 in 10 industrial accidents are due to fatigue. Find the probability that exactly 2 out of 8 accidents are due to fatigue. Now students, solution, it is given that 2 in 10 industrial accidents are due to fatigue. It means that P is equal to 2 upon 10 and 2 upon 10 is 0.2. Now we know that q is given by 1 minus p so is equal to 1 minus 0.2 so is equal to 0.8. So 0.8 is the value of q. Now soon here we have to find the probability that exactly 2 out of 8 accidents are due to fatigue. 2 out of 8 it means n is equal to 8 and r is equal to 2. Now as per binomial distribution, P of R is given by NCR into P rest to R into Q rest to N minus R. If I put the values, I'll get P of 2 is equal to 8C2 into 0.2 bracket rest to 2 into 0.8 bracket rest to 8 minus 2. So is equal to 8C2 is 28 into this term here as it is into 0.8 bracket rest to I'll get 6. And now if I do this calculations on Cal C, I'll get 0 0.2936. So this is your final answer. Now students, next sum is in 200 sets of tosses of 5 fair coins, in how many ways you can expect first at least 2 heads, second at most 2 heads. So in solution given, now student here, 200 sets are given it means that capital N is equal to 200 and 5 fair coins are tossed it means small n is equal to 5 and we have to find the number of ways for first at least 2 heads and second for at most 2 heads. So we know that P means the probability of getting success in a single trial. So probability of getting head in single trial will be 1 upon 2. So the value of p is 1 by 2. Now soon we know that q is the complement of p. So q is given by 1 minus p. So is equal to 1 minus half. So is equal to half. So half is the value of q. Now as per binomial distribution p of r is given by ncr into p rest to r into q rest to n minus r where p of r is the probability of getting r number of successes. So first is we have to find the probability of getting at least two heads. So probability of getting at least two heads. Now so for at least two heads the value of r will be 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. It means that we have to find probability of 2 plus probability of 3 plus probability of 4 plus probability of 5. Now so for this we can write 1 minus probability of 0 plus probability of 1. We know that this term is the complement of this term. So for this probability we can write 1 minus probability of 0 plus probability of 1. So is equal to 1 minus. Now so this term is for r is equal to 0 and this term is for r is equal to 1. So is equal to 1 minus. 5c0 is 1 into, now so anything rest to 0 is 1 into, 1 by 2 means 0.5 rest to I'll get 5 plus 
5 c1 is 5 into 1 by 2 means 0.5 into here I'll get 0.5 raised to 4 and if I do this calculation on Cal C I'll get 0 0.8125 so 0 0.8125 is the value of probability of getting two heads but soon here we have to find the number of ways of getting two heads so if I multiply this probability by the capital N I'll get the number of ways of getting at least two heads so now total number of ways of at least two heads will be n into p so n is 200 into p is just now we have found that is 0 0.8125 if i do this calculations i'll get 162.5 and 162.5 is approximately equal to 163 so there are 163 ways of getting at least two heads now soon second probability that we are going to find is probability of at most two heads so at most two heads means r is equal to 0 or 1 or 2 it means we have to find probability of 0 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 2 so this is the term for r is equal to 0 this is the term for r is equal to 1 and this is the term for r is equal to 2 if I do these call calculations on Calc, I'll get 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is the probability of getting at most two heads. But we have to find the number of ways of getting at most two heads. So if I multiply this probability by the total number of sets, I'll get the total number of ways of getting at two heads. So now total number of ways of at most two heads is n into p. So n is 200 into p is 0.5 so 200 into 0.5 will be 100 is the number of ways of getting at most two heads and these are your final answers now students next distribution is poison's distribution so as per poison's distribution probability of r number of successes in n number of trials is given by p of r is equal to m rest to r into e rest to minus m upon r factorial where m is mean and the formula for m is n into p where n is the total number of trials and p is the probability of getting success in single trial most one the value of r factorial we can easily calculate on calci so by using this formula we can find probability of getting r number of successes as per the poisons distribution now students next sum is if the random variable has a poisons distribution such that p of 3 is equal to p of 4 find p of 0 and p of 1 so in solution as per poisons distribution p of r is given by m rest to r into e rest to minus m upon r factorial now children it is given that p of 3 is equal to p of 4 now children, for finding p of 3 in this equation for this r we have to put 3 so i'll get m rest to 3 into e rest to minus m upon 3 factorial is equal to for finding p of 4 for this r we have to write 4 so i'll get m rest to 4 into e rest to minus m upon 4 factorial here this e rest to minus m and this e rest to minus m will get cancelled this 4 factorial will come up here and this m cube will come down here so i'll get 4 factorial upon 3 factorial is equal to m rest to 4 upon m cube now, so 4 factorial means 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 upon 3 factorial means 1 into 2 into 3 is equal to here these 3 m's and out of these 4 m's 3 m's will get cancelled so here i'll get m so m is equal to i'll get here this 1 this 1 will get cancelled this 2 this 2 will get cancelled this 3 and this 3 will get cancelled so i'll get 4 so the value of m is now 4 and now we can find p of 0 
and for finding p of 0 in this equation for this r we have to put 0 and for m we have to put 4 so I'll get p of 0 is equal to 4 rest to 0 into e rest to minus 4 upon 0 factorial so p of 0 is equal to now soon we know that anything rest to 0 is 1 into this e rest to minus 4 here as it is upon 0 factorial is 1. If I do this calculations on Cal-C, I'll get P of 0 is equal to 0 0.01832. So this is the value of P of 0. And now we can find P of 1. And for finding P of 1, for this R, we have to put 1. And for M, we have to put 4. So I'll get P of 1 is equal to 4 rest to 1 into e rest to minus 4 upon 1 factorial. So is equal to 4 rest to 1 is 4 into this e rest to minus 4 here as it is upon 1 factorial is 1. And if I do these calculations on Cal-C, I'll get P of 1 is equal to 0 0.0733. So this is the value of P of 1. And these are your final answers. Now students, next sum is, in Poisson's distribution, mean value is 3.4, find P of 6. So in solution, given mean, that is M, is equal to 3.4 and, now soon here we have to find P of 6. It means that the value of R is equal to 6. As per Poisson's distribution, P of R is given by M rest to R into A rest to minus M upon R factorial. So if I put the values, I'll get P of 6 is equal to 3.4 rest to 6 into E rest to minus 3.4 upon 6 factorial. Now so if I do these calculations on Cal-C, I'll get P of 6 is equal to 0 0.072. So this is your final answer. Now students, next sum is, the probability of getting an item defective is 0 0.005. What is the probability that exactly 3 items in a sample of 200 are defective? In solution, now shown here in this problem, this value is the value of P, this is R and this one is N. So given is P is equal to 0 0.005, N is equal to 200 and R is equal to 3. And now first we have to find the value of mean that is M. And mean M is given by N into P. So is equal to N is 200 into P is 0 0.005. So is equal to I'll get 1. So 1 is the value of M. And now students. As per Poisson's distribution, P of R is given by M rest to R into E rest to minus M upon R factorial. If I put all these values in this equation, I'll get P of 3 is equal to 1 cube into E rest to minus 1 upon 3 factorial. And if I do these calculations on Cal-C, I'll get P of 3 is equal to 0 0.0613. So this is your final answer. Now so next sum is fit Poisson's distribution for the set of observations. Here in these observations the observations are given and their frequencies are also given. So in solution from the given from these observations we can find the mean and the formula for mean m is summation fi into xi upon summation fi. It means that for this sum we have to take product of these two and then we have to add all their terms. So I'll get 122 into 0 plus 16 into 1 plus 15 into 2 plus 2 into 3 plus 1 into 4 upon summation fi. It means that we have to take sum of all these frequencies. So here 122 plus 60 plus 15 plus 2 plus 1. So is equal to I'll get 0.5. So the value of M is 0.5. Now students, as per Poisson's distribution, P of R is given by M rest to R into E rest to minus M upon R factorial. Here, the value of M is 0.5.
so i'll put this value in this formula so i'll get p of r so is equal to 0.5 raised to r into e raised to minus 0.5 upon r factorial so this is the poisson's distribution for these observations and this is your final answer now students next sum is if the probability of bad reaction from a certain injection is 0.001 comma determine the chance that out of 1000 individuals first exactly two will suffer bad reaction second at least two will suffer bad reaction third at most two will suffer bad reaction and fourth is more than two will suffer bad reaction now student in solution first we will write down the given now student here this 1000 is nothing but the value of n and this 0.001 is nothing but the value of p so n is equal to 1000 and p is equal to 0.001 and now so we can find the m that is mean and the formula for mean is n into p so is equal to 1000 into 0.001 so is equal to i'll get 1 so 1 is the value of mean m and now student as per poisson's distribution p of r is given by m raised to r into e raised to minus m upon r factorial now the first probability that we are going to find is probability of exactly two will suffer bad reaction now soon exactly two means the value of r will be two so in this equation i'll put r is equal to two and m is equal to one so i'll get p of two is equal to 1 square into e raised to minus 1 upon 2 factorial and if i do these calculations on calci i'll get 0 0.1840 so 0 0.1840 is the value of probability of exactly 2 will suffer bad reaction now soon second probability that we are going to find is probability of at least 2 will suffer bad reaction now so at least 2 means the value of r will be 2 comma 3 comma 4 and so on up to 1000 it means that we have to find probability of 2 plus probability of 3 plus probability of 4 dash 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 plus probability of 1000 now so to find these many probabilities is just quite difficult so for this i can write 1 minus probability of 0 plus probability of 1 this is the complement of these probabilities for this the value of r is 0 and for this the value of r is equal to 1 so as per this equation for this i can write 1 minus in square bracket 1 raised to 0 into e raised to minus 1 upon 0 factorial plus 1 raised to 1 into e raised to minus 1 upon 1 factorial so is equal to now so if I do these calculations on calci, I'll get 0 0.2640. So this is the value of probability of at least 2 will suffer bad reaction. Now students, third probability that we are going to find is probability of at most 2 will suffer bad reaction. Now so at most 2 means the value of R will be 0, 1, 2. So we have to find probability of 0 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 2 so this is the term by taking r is equal to 0 this is the term by taking r is equal to 1 and this is the term by taking r is equal to 2 and if i do these calculations on calci i'll get 0 0.92 so 0 0.92 is the value of probability of at most 2 will suffer bad reaction now students last probability that we are going to find is probability of more than 2 will suffer bad reaction now should more than 2 means the value of r will be 3 comma 4 comma 5 and so on up to 1000 it means that we have to find probability of 3 plus probability of 4 plus probability of 5 dash 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 plus probability of 1000 but soon to find these many probabilities is quite difficult so for this we can write 1 minus probability of 0 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 2 this is the complement of these probabilities so here the value of r is 0 here the value of r is 1 here the value of r is 2 
So from this equation I can write 1 minus in square bracket 1 raised to 0 into e raised to minus 1 upon 0 factorial plus 1 raised to 1 into e raised to minus 1 upon 1 factorial plus 1 square into e raised to minus 1 upon 2 factorial. And if I do these calculations on calc, I'll get 0 0.08. So 0 0.08 is the value of probability of more than 2 will suffer bad reaction. And these are your final answers. Now, so next distribution is normal distribution. So in last distribution, we found P of R, where R is random variable. In this distribution, we will denote random variable by X. And for each and every random variable, we have to find its standardized value. And standardized value of X is given by Z is equal to X minus mu upon sigma. So Z means the standard value of X. Mu is mean and sigma is standard deviation. So by using this formula, we can find the standardized value of the random variable X. Now students, this curve is called as standard normal curve. Area under this curve will give you the probability. Now students, we know that the value of probability lies between 0 to 1. It means the maximum value of probability is 1. It means that the maximum area under this curve is 1. This is the line which is called as mean, mode or median. It means that this curve is symmetrical about this central axis that is mean, mode and median. It means the area on the RHS is 0.5 and the area in LHS is 0.5. At this point, the value of Z is equal to 0. Here Z is equal to 1, Z is equal to 2, Z is equal to 3. On this side, the value of Z is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Now, student, at this point, it is mu. At this point, it is mu plus sigma. At this point, it is mu plus 2 sigma. At this point, it is mu plus 3 sigma. On this side, at this point, there is mu minus sigma. At this point, there is mu minus 2 sigma. At this point, there is mu minus 3 sigma and so on on both the sides. So this curve is called as standard normal curve. Now students, in example, they will give you the random variable x. So for that random variable x, we have to find its standard value by using this formula. Suppose that standard value is 1. Suppose z is equal to 1. So we have to draw like this a line at this point. And suppose we want to find the probability more than this x. So more than means the area on the RHS of this line. And less than means the area on LHS of this line. So in this way we can find the probability for any random variable. Now, so just keep in your mind that the area under the first standard deviation is 68%. Area under the second standard deviation is 95%. And the area under third standard deviation is 99.7%. Now, so next sum is... A sample of 100 dry battery cells tested to find the length of life produced the following results. Mu that is mean is equal to 12 hours. Sigma that is standard deviation is equal to 3 hours. Assuming that the data is normally distributed. What percentage of battery cells are expressed to have life? First more than 15 hours. Second less than 6 hours. And third between 10 hours and 14 hours now shown here in this table the area under the standard normal curve is given so area between z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 2.5 is 0 0.4938 the area between z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 2 is 0 0.4772 and the area between 
z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 1 is 0 0.3413. The area between z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0 0.67 is 0 0.2486. So, in solution, first we will write down the given. Mu, that is mean, is equal to 12 hours. Standard deviation, that is sigma, is equal to 3 hours. And n is equal to 100. The total number of dry cells are 100. Therefore, n is equal to 100. Now, students, this 15 hours, 6 hours, 10 hours, and 14 hours are the random variables. For these variables, we have to find their standardized values. And the standard value of x is given by z is equal to x minus mu upon sigma. Now, student, the standardized value of 6 will be, as per this formula, I'll get 6 minus 12 upon 3. 6 is random variable that is x, 12 is mu, and 3 is sigma. So I'll get minus 2. So minus 2 is the standardized value of random variable 6. Now soon, the standardized value of 10 is equal to 10 minus 12 upon 3. So is equal to minus 0 0.67. The standardized value of 14 is equal to 14 minus 12 upon 6. So is equal to, I'll get 0 0.67. And the standardized value of 15 is 15 minus 12 upon 6 is equal to, I'll get 1. So these are the standardized values of these random variables. Now students, we'll find these probabilities. And the first probability that we are going to find is probability of life of battery cell is more than 15 hours. Now students, for this 15 hours, we found its standardized value as 1. And here we have to find the probability that more than 15 hours. Now shown here, this is the line of z is equal to 1. And more than means the area on the RHS of this line. So we have to find this much of area. Now shown we know that on the RHS of this line, the area is 0.5. So if I subtract this much of area from that 0.5, I'll get this area. So... 0.5 minus area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 1 will give you the probability of life of battery cell more than 15 hours. So is equal to 0 0.5 here as it is minus. Also this much of area is given in this table and it is 0 0.3413. So here it is 0 0.3413. So is equal to I'll get 0 0.1587. So is equal to in percentage I'll get 15.87%. So this is the probability in percentage that the life of battery cell is more than 15 hours. Now, so second probability that we are going to find is probability of life of battery cell is less than 6 hours. Now, so the standardized value for 6 hours is minus 2. And less than means the area on LHS of this Z is equal to minus 2. Now, so this much of area is nothing but this area because this curve is symmetrical about this axis. So, finding this area is nothing but finding this area. And how to find the value of this area is, now, so the area on RHS of this line is 0 0.5. So, if I subtract this much of area from 0 0.5, I'll get this area. So is equal to 0.5 minus area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to plus 2. So is equal to this 0.5 here as it is minus. Now so this area is given in this table and it is 0 0.4772. So here it is 0 0.4772. So is equal to I'll get 0 0.0228. And in percentage it is 2.28%. So 2.28% is the value of probability of life of battery cell is less than 6 hours. Now, so third probability that we are going to find is probability of life of battery cell lies between 10 hours to 14 hours. Now, so for 10, the standardized value is minus 0 0.67 and for 14, the standardized value is plus 0 0.67. Now, so 
the life of battery cell is in between 10 hours to 14 hours it means that greater than 10 hours and less than 14 hours so we have to find this much of area greater than 0 0.67 it means this area and less than 0 0.67 means this area so from the area from minus 0 0.67 to plus 0 0.67 this much of area will give you this probability now so we know that this curve is symmetrical about this axis it means that both of these two areas are same so if i take this much of area if i multiply this area by 2 i'll get this total area so i can write 2 into area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 0 0.67 so is equal to this 2 here as it is into now so this area is given in this table and it is 0 0.2486 so here it is 0 0.2486 so is equal to i'll get 0 0.4974 so is equal to in percentage i'll get 49.74 percent so this is the value of probability of life of battery cell lies between 10 hours to 14 hours and these are your final answers now so next sum is in a sample of 1000 cases the mean of certain test is 14 and standard deviation is 2.5 assuming the distribution is normal find first how many students score between 12 and 15 second how many students score above 18 now so here in this table the area under the standard normal curve is given so area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 0.8 is 0 0.2881 area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 0.4 is 0 0.1554 and the area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 1.6 is 0 0.4452 now so in solution we will write down the given now so given is n is equal to 1000 mu is equal to 14 sigma is equal to 2.5 n is 1000 mean that is mu is equal to 14 and standard deviation that is sigma is 2.5 now so in these values that is 12 15 and 18 are the random variables so first we have to find the standardized values of these random variables and the standardized value of x that is random variable is given by z is equal to x minus mu upon sigma where x is random variable mu is mean that is 14 and sigma is standard deviation that is 2.5 so now the standardized value of 12 is equal to 12 minus 14 upon 2.5 so is equal to i'll get minus 0.8 so minus 0.8 is the standard value of 12 now the standardized value of 15 is 15 minus 14 upon 2.5 so is equal to i'll get 0 0.4 next thing is the standardized value of 18 is equal to 18 minus 14 upon 2.5 so is equal to i'll get 1.6 so these are the standardized values of these random variables and now soon we will find the first probability that is probability of score is in between 12 to 15 now so 12 to 15 means greater than 12 or above 12 and less than 15 the standard value of 12 is minus 0 0.8 and the standard value of 15 is 0.4 so this probability will be given by the area under this standard normal curve so we have to take area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to minus 0 0.8 and area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 0.4 now so we know that this curve is symmetrical about this axis so this area that is area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to minus 0.8 is equal to area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to plus 0.8 so instead of taking this area we can take this area so for this probability i can write area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 0 0.8 plus area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to plus 0 0.4 and these two areas are given in this table so from this table i can write 0 0.2881 plus 0 0.1554 so is equal to i'll get 0 0.4435 so this is the probability of 
score is in between 12 to 15 and now we can find the number of students who score in between 12 to 15 so the required number of students is equal to n into p so n is 1000 into the value of p is 0 0.4435 so is equal to i'll get 443.5 so is equal to 443 students will score in between 12 to 15. Now, so the second probability that we are going to find is probability of score is above 18. Now, so the standard value of 18 is 1.6 and above 18 means we have to take this much of area. Now, so for finding this area, we have to subtract this area from 0.5. We know that the area on RHS of this line is 0.5. So if I subtract this much of area from 0.5, I'll get this area. So for this probability, I can write 0.5 minus area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 1.6. So is equal to 0.5 minus this area is given in this table. So from this table, I can write 0 0.4452. So is equal to, I'll get 0 0.0548 so this is the value of probability of score is above 18 and now we can find the number of students who score above 18 so the required number of students is equal to n into p so is equal to n is 1000 into p is 0 0.0548 so is equal to i'll get 54.8 so is equal to 55 so 55 students will score above 18. So these are your final answers. Now students, next sum is GRE, that is graduation record examination scores are normally distributed with mean 500 and standard deviation 100. Find the probability that a randomly selected GRE score is greater than 620, given that area under z is equal to 1.2 is equal to 0 0.3849 in solution first we will write down the given so in given mu that is mean is 500 sigma that is standard deviation is 100 and x that is random variable is 620 and area under z is equal to 1.2 is 0 0.3849 so this is given now soon we will find the standard value for this random variable and standard value of random variable x is given by z is equal to x minus mu upon sigma therefore standard value of 620 will be 620 minus 500 upon 100 so is equal to 120 upon 100 and 120 upon 100 is 1.2 so 1.2 is the standard value of 620 and now we can find the probability so the probability that we are going to find is probability of score is more than 620 the standard value of 620 is 1.2 it means that we have to find this area that is the area on the rhs of z is equal to 1.2 because here we have to find score more than 620 and more than 620 means the area on the rhs of z is equal to 1.2 now soon we know that the area on the rhs of this line is 0.5 so if i subtract this much of area from 0.5 i'll get this required area so 0.5 minus area between z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 1.2 so is equal to 0.5 minus now so this area is given 0 0.3849 so here it is 0 0.3849 so is equal to i'll get 0 0.1151 so 0 0.1151 is the value of probability of score is more than 620 and this is your final answer now student next sum is 95% of students at a school are in between 1.2 meter to 1.6 meter tall. Find the mean and standard deviation, assuming normal distribution. Now, so in solution, first we will find the mean of these two numbers. So, mean mu is equal to 
1.2 plus 1.6 upon 2. So in this way we can find the mean of two numbers. So I'll get 2.8 upon 2 and 2.8 upon 2 is 1.4. So 1.4 is the value of mu and mu means mean. And now we can find standard deviation. Now soon here it is given that 95% student at a school are in between 1.2 meter to 1.6 meter. Now students we know that area under second standard deviation is 95%. So this is second standard deviation. This one is first standard deviation and this one is second standard deviation. And area under second standard deviation is 95%. It means that this value is 1.6 and this value is 1.2 and now we will find difference between these two values so for that I can write mu plus 2 sigma minus in bracket mu minus 2 sigma is equal to 1.6 minus 1.2 now student this mu plus 2 sigma here as it is if I open this bracket I'll get minus mu plus 2 sigma is equal to here I'll get 0.4 now soon here this plus mu and this minus mu will get cancel so I'll get 2 sigma plus 2 sigma is 4 sigma is equal to this 0.4 now this 4 will come down here so I'll get sigma is equal to 0.4 upon 4 and now soon 0.4 upon 4 is 0.1 so the value of sigma is 0.4 1 and sigma means standard deviation so in this way we found both the answers that is mean and standard deviation so these are your final answers